If you like my videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon. For only a dollar a month, you have the ability to request videos and get a big shout out in one of my upcoming videos. Thank you. I can't on today's episode, we are talking about a group of super-powered individuals. These individuals, while super in their own right, as a team, there is just no one better. No, I'm not talking about the Illuminati. I'm talking about the Avengers. Specifically, Captain America and the Avengers from Data East. What's the story behind the strange assembling of the cast for this classic arcade game? Let's find out as we smash into the history of Captain America and the Avengers. Marvel superheroes have been featured in games starting as far back as Spider-Man for the Atari 2600. This was followed up by a series of graphical text adventures for the Commodore 64 and Apple. The series was entitled Quest Probe and featured the likes of Spider-Man, the Hulk, and the Fantastic Four each in their own separate adventure. Even Howard the Duck got a game that was released by Activision to tie in with his ill-fated movie. The very first Marvel arcade game though was Captain America and the Avengers by Data East released in 1991. Data East had been around for a number of years at this point, bringing out such arcade hits as Burger Time, Karate Champ, Kung Fu Master, Bad Dudes, and Robocop. After seeing how insanely popular Robocop was for his company, Data East designer Akira Ito tried to secure more popular licensed brands. He looked to America, where Marvel Comics had been a staple for almost 30 years. Right off the bat, he wanted the big guns, specifically Spider-Man and the Incredible Hulk, due to Mr. Ito being the most familiar with the characters because of their successful TV shows in Japan. Unfortunately, Spider-Man was tied up by Sega due to their upcoming arcade game to be released later in 1991. Instead, he went in a different direction, opting instead to go for Earth's mightiest heroes, the Avengers. Once again though, Mr. Ito ran into trouble when it came to the character selection. Only part of the Avengers team could be used. Due to licensing agreements with other companies, the Hulk and Thor were off the table immediately. This left the team with Captain America, Iron Man, Vision, and Hawkeye. This was long before the Marvel Cinematic Universe popularized these characters and made them a mainstream success. Perhaps Data East had a crystal ball and by doing that voodoo that they do do, they were able to predict the future when it came to these popular characters. Captain America and the Avengers was released in the spring of 1991 by Data East. The game is a four-player scrolling beat-em-up with the ability to play as Earth's mightiest heroes, or at least some of them. When I was showing my son Max some early footage from this video, he asked me why Vision looked so strange. He said it looked like somebody had dropped him into a vat of bleach, and I couldn't agree more. I don't recall Vision ever having this costume in the comics, so I had to go back and research it, and sure enough, he does. The game opens with the Red Skull and his assortment of mini-bosses taking over the world. The game is presented in a variety of comic style panels which makes it seem like a living and breathing comic book. Everything has a nice feel to it, including the fighting, which includes loads of whacks and kabooms when inflicting damage on the enemy. Very similar to how the 1966 Batman series brought the comic book to life. You have a jump and an attack button. Pressing both buttons together will unleash your character's special move. Captain America will throw a shield. Iron Man unleashes a repulsor blast, Hawkeye shoots an arrow, and Vision fires a laser beam. Along the way, to aid you in your battle, you will see rocks and cans that can be picked up and thrown at your opponents. The game takes place across five stages of varying difficulty. You start out on foot, defeating endless hordes of bad guys until you finally take down the mini-boss of each level. Some of these characters have never appeared in any other arcade game. The list of bosses are Whirlwind, Giant Robot, Grim Reaper, Wizard, Mech Taco, which is a poor translation. It should actually be Taco, which is the Japanese word for octopus. Mandarin, Juggernaut, Ultron, Crossbones, the Red Skull, and finally the Mech Skull. To aid you in your battle, there are a few celebrity superhero cameos, such as Submariner, 
Wonder Man, Quicksilver, and the Wasp. Now everyone that knows me knows that I'm mostly a DC kind of guy with a little bit of Marvel thrown in. At the time, the only villain I recognized was the Red Skull. I had no idea who these other Jokers were. <laughs> this game is considered the top tier of bad translations. A lot of games that have been localized from Japan may have a word or two that just doesn't make sense. This game has at least 9 or 10. From you stupid men to why should it goes well? Why indeed? Upon its release, the game proved to be a success in the arcades. Data East was in charge of the Sega Genesis version, and this one turned out the best. The gameplay is very similar to the arcade game, and it features almost all of the voice samples found within. The only thing that lets it down is the low quality sound samples, but this was due to the limitations of the Genesis hardware. To be honest though, this could have been better, but what we have is pretty good. Next up is the Game Gear version. This is basically the arcade game, simplified to run on 8-bit hardware. One notable change though is that it's strictly a solo affair, but you do get to pick any of the four Avengers. The graphics have been simplified as well with the viewpoint changed to just a standard side-scrolling 2D beat-em-up. The music is similar to the arcade game, but there are no digitized sound effects. The playability is decent, but not quite as good as the Genesis or arcade game. Developed by Mindscape instead of Diddy's, which clearly was a giant mistake, is the Super Nintendo version. While graphically prettier than the Sega version, the gameplay is atrocious. The hit detection is way off, making an already difficult game almost impossible. The graphics are a bit more colorful and detailed than the Sega Genesis version, but the animation is missing a lot of frames. It's also missing approximately 90% of the sound samples found in the Sega Genesis and arcade version. After speaking with someone who was on the dev team who wishes to remain anonymous, he informed me that the reason that the game didn't turn out so well was because that dev time was cut in half and their lack of experience on the console. His bosses wanted to get the game out ASAP to capitalize on the arcade game's success. I was very excited to get this when I was a kid as I knew how good the Sega Genesis version was, so of course, in my eyes, the Super Nintendo version had to be better. Talk about a disappointment. This is a giant turd of a game and should be avoided at all costs. Speaking of the wonderful development team at Mindscape, they took a crack at the Game Boy version. How do you think it fared? Take everything you knew and loved about the Super Nintendo version and strip it of its color, its dignity, and its manhood, and this is what you are left with. Horrible controls, slow choppy animation, and totally average sound. Best to avoid it at all costs. There was also a Nintendo Entertainment version which took a lot of liberties with the property. The mission of the game is to rescue Vision and Iron Man from the clutches of the Mandarin. Then you have to go on to defeat Red Skull. The gameplay is okay, just not quite as tight as the arcade game. The graphics are nice and colorful and there is some decent platforming action. In 1995, Data East would return to the superhero genre with Avengers and Galactic Storm. This is a one-on-one -on -one fighting game with pre-rendered graphics that look absolutely gorgeous. While the game has nice tight controls, the problem lies with the roster. There is only eight playable characters. This may have been A-OK -okay back in 1992, but here it is, 1995, and we are in the middle of Capcom fever and all of their excellent fighting games. Still, if you are a Marvel fan and a fighting game fan, this is one to definitely check out. And that about does it for Captain America and the Avengers. The game may be a bit on the short side, but it's loaded with Marvel references and has plenty of action to boot. With over a thousand cabinets sold and produced, I'm sure you'll find one out in the wild somewhere. Check it out if you happen to see one. If you like my videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Also, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. It's the only way it can grow. Thanks for watching.